I'm Dr. Larry Carnes, and welcome to Spotlight TV. We're so very glad that you could join us for another powerful Spotlight TV broadcast. We're honored to have with us today a very special guest, Judy Rents. Judy, how are you doing today? Well, today is just like any other day. Uh, mornings are extremely hard for me, and I don't know the reason for that. It's just okay. that every morning is very hard until about one or two o'clock. Wow. And uh, uh, my body eases up by then. But, um, you know, other than that, I was just telling my husband how I would love to just go to Hobby Lobby. Uh, <laughs> I've not been out of the house in over almost four years. Well, do this for us. Introduce yourself to our audience, and then we're going to talk about okay. the challenges that you're facing how you're navigating this journey. Mm -hmm. My name is Judy Rents, R-E-N-T-Z, and um, I'm an East Tennessee girl. I uh, born and raised, we've lived all over the country here, uh, but uh, we knew we would always retire uh, at home and um, uh, just to be around nieces and nephews. And I yes. left my two grandchildren up north uh, because of the cold weather, um, okay. uh, just had to get out of there after 23 years. My goodness. I understand that East Tennessee, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee myself. So I understand that. Listen, you talk about this fighting to survive the suicide disease and you write something here that's so very powerful. Are you hurting? Is the question that you ask pain that comes upon your body every day as you rise. Do you have pain? You try to explain to doctor after doctor, searching always for someone who could understand and offer compassion to you. And yet, no one, no one comes time after time. That is so powerful. Talk to us about that, Judy, and give us some insights into this fighting to survive the suicide disease. And tell us, what is the suicide disease? Well, the disease is pudendal nerve entrapment or neuralgia. Uh, entrapment is when the nerve is literally bound uh, in its own little canal and I develop scar tissue. A lot of people after surgery just go about living a wonderful life working and mm. uh, whatever. Just I am one of the ones that develop scar tissue, but um, um, in searching for some sort of relief, uh, my husband and I start, well, my husband, I found the house in Tennessee. Uh, he had not planned to retire for two years, but uh, I found the house in Tennessee and we were going back and forth to Pittsburgh because my granddaughters and daughter are there. But okay. uh, I only was able to drive the one time and I got there and I had to lie in bed for two weeks, two weeks straight. It oh, was goodness. literal torment because I'd sat that long, but we searched, we searched. I was constantly on the internet looking just anywhere. And you know how you can go into leads yes. and to this point and to this point, but my husband and I both were searching for this, disease that that um if you told it it almost seems unbelievable okay but um uh i i nobody saw this on my face i swore i would not wear this on my face yes and, uh, anyway we kept searching both of us but in um oh eight probably um no i'm sorry in oh seven uh, one Sunday afternoon, I made it to church and to choir. That was my life. But um, anyway, one Sunday afternoon, cold in the winter, I just couldn't bear anything anymore. I had left the church just crying my heart out. My pastor caught me in the hallway and we talked quite a long time. And he said, I'm going to find you a doctor. And he did. But anyway, that afternoon, I just couldn't bear it anymore. When you have this, you are holding on to anything and writhing and twisting. And uh, if you get to the bathroom, it's almost on your knees. My, and my. 
just not able to do one thing. And I, I just said, I can't bear this anymore. So I called the clinic at my doctor's office and this is Sunday. And uh, anyway, the very mean nurse, finally, finally, I got someone to answer. She said, well, you can come and stand around the building like all the other hundred people outside. And it was cold and okay. spitting, spitting snow. But um, I said, you don't understand. I can't stand and I can't sit and, and I'm beyond pain. You don't understand. So talk well, to us then, Judy. When you talk about this pain, people not understanding the pain. Now you said this. You say experiencing pain almost your entire life from the age of four years old. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about discovering your passion for gardening and landscaping and how it involved into a business for you. Mm -hmm. But now when you were experiencing this pain since the age of four, mm -hmm. how progressive was it and how did you deal with it from four years old moving forward? Well, the thing about uh, at four years old, I just remember that far back. I have wonderful memory. And okay. um, at four years old, I was always complaining with my hip and my leg all the way down. And for years, uh, my early years, I was treated with for sciatica. Well, you just have sciatica. But that's what was the pain until my first surgeon said it manifested when I started the landscaping. And uh, I gardened, my goodness, I just found it was the love of my life. And it's the, yeah. the one thing that kept me going in Pittsburgh too. But um, anyway, um, he said that it manifested with that. But, By doing the uh, gardening and the landscaping. Yes, yes. And I had helpers, but the gardener has to get her hands dirty. Yeah, we just have the pain in and of itself, you were experiencing that at an early age. Yes, yes. So, so now uh, I noticed that you studied gardening at Penn State. Uh-huh. And then so, but dealing with that, going to school, studying gardening at Penn State, and still surviving the suicide disease. Tell our viewing audience, because there are people who need to hear this. They need to know a way out, a way that they can survive. You say something very powerful. You said, there is help for you. I write this to let you know we sufferers now have help. So let the people know what type of help is there for them because you're a survivor. Share that with our viewing audience. Well, um, the help I found for all the years, I would not have survived without God and my faith. But yes. there were times you battle God. Why, 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 why? There have been times I've been on the floor. You see me. Why won't you release me? And let me go from this crippling, horrible thing. But anyway, besides that, we finally, finally found a doctor. My husband, okay. um, that afternoon when I went to that clinic, I couldn't bear it anymore. So I went to the hospital. And this is another thing that happens to us. I went to the ER. We yeah. always get locked up. We always get locked and sent to the psych ward. That's another story in itself and the drug addict ward. And that's what people think you are. But anyway, um, my husband came home then and uh, got me unlocked. Mm. And uh, anyway, after that, uh, just, just a little, he retired early then because okay. he had been telling them uh, there's something mysterious and he'd have to go at any time. But he did retire when they had me locked up and up on the fourth ward with the addicts. So, so what, what was the relief? How did you find the relief? The, we searched and we searched and we searched. One night, uh, he was on the computer and I was lying down. But he said, listen to this. He had found a paper online written by two doctors and they had found Levator syndrome. Mm. Levator is a pre, I call it a precursor to this disease. It's the muscle between us and in our rear. But um, anyway, oh, did it sound just like me? So okay. through, through that, uh, we had that name. And however, it wasn't my disease. From there, we searched on further and 
there's some miracles involved in here and that's that's in the book but anyway um search search and i i went to a very famous doctor here in knoxville tennessee and he said we didn't have a name that was a question mark uh he said yes you do have levator syndrome he said i don't know anybody in the southeast that treats it however when i got home um I don't, he didn't refer the name to me in Chattanooga, just two hours away from Knoxville. Yes. Reconstructive surgeon. And he, he did internal blocks. I was about 80 pounds and he saved my life. So, so the solution or the help that you found, you found through a doctor in Chattanooga, Tennessee, my hometown. Yes. And you're talking internal blocks. Yes. Yes. Okay. T -t -t Talk to our audience about that. And so this is something, see, we want them to go and, and purchase this book because here yes. you have some important information yes. that can help those who are going through what you've gone through get released yes. for it. So give us a little bit about that. I know you don't want to tell the whole book, but give us a little bit yeah. about that. Well, um, I have forgotten now how that doctor and nurse found me or because doctor, the doctor in Knoxville knew nobody. And that's a sad mm -hmm. situation. All of Knoxville, you know, it's a big medical town. Nobody knew anything about this disease. Okay. But anyway, uh, the nurse contacted me and she said, you've got to come. And I'm going, poo, 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 one more dead end. Because yes. when, uh, anyway, she said, you've got to. I've seen miracles come out of here. And it was horrible. The wow. first, it was absolutely horrible because he had to find the areas that he had to block internally. Now, for okay. that, you get a little pudendal, but you don't get uh, any any sedation while you're getting wow. these. So Time he, flies. So listen, uh, we have we have ninety seconds left. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, no, 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 no. You're fine. You're fine. This is what I want you to do. Share, take 60 seconds, share contact information for our viewing audience where they might want to reach you. You might have a website where they can contact you, get this book, because you're going to help a lot of people. Take 60 seconds, 60 seconds and do that for us. Okay. My website is judyvrents.com and my email is judyrents and then R-E-N-T-S at gmail.com. I mean, yeah at gmail and um i put my phone number in the book i don't i've talked to people all over the world and i don't yeah. mind talking to anybody and praying with anybody and um anyway that is uh that's how you can reach me and i'm i'll talk to you anytime anybody calls but wow. um, um we do have help uh okay. my specialist 15 seconds, 15 okay. seconds. My, my specialist now, it's a miracle how he was found. I've, I've got four major miracles in this book, and there's no explanation for them other than God. Uh, but anyway, he's in Chattanooga, a younger man now. He's 45 so. And um, when I got to him, he came out and told my husband, she's dying. Do I Excellent. have your Okay. We have to go. Our time is gone, okay. but you've given your contact information, how they can yeah. reach you. We want yeah. you to do that. Listen, I'm Dr. Larry Carnes. We thank you so much for being with us here on Spotlight TV. Judy, thank you so much. And we will look forward to seeing you again right here on Spotlight TV. <music>